We are also in Zoom, um, and you may even be seeing this later on YouTube, but wherever you are joining us in service and whenever you are joining us in service, we are so glad to have you here with us. We don't take for granted the time that you have taken to come and worship and experience the presence of the Lord with us. We've just come out of a fantastic time of praise and worship and realizing how much and just telling Jesus within our own hearts how much we love him, how much we worship and adore him. And you're joining us just in time to receive a word from the Lord from our pastor. So we thank you so much for joining us. I am the assistant pastor, Elder Shannon Carter. Here, um, our, you'll hear from our senior pastor, Pastor Jeff E. Carter. He's gonna bring us an awesome and fantastic word on today. Just before we go to the word of God, we're going to have our prayer and our scripture. Our prayer will be coming from Dr. Renee Edgerton. Immediately following Dr. Edgerton, we will have our scripture by Elder Anita Dooley. And the next voice that you will hear will be that of our pastor, Pastor Jeff Carter. And then we'll come back later with announcements. God bless you. Hallelujah. Lord, we humble ourselves before you. Forgive us of our sins. Lord, bless us with a spirit of repentance. Lord, we thank you for your blessings. Lord, we thank you because we don't take for granted that you have blessed us once again to rise and see another day. Lord, you have blessed us with yet another chance in this atmosphere to get things right. A reset with you, O oh Lord. Lord, we thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Lord, we thank you for your favor. Lord, protect and cover our spiritual leaders. Cover them with the blood of the lamb, Lord Jesus. Lord, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor and we give you all the praise. Lord, we ask that you prepare our hearts and minds as we submit ourselves to receive your word as our spiritual leaders ministers unto our soul and feeds us with knowledge and understanding. Lord, you are an awesome God. Thank you for being a very present help. Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless your holy name. Amen. Coming from the book of Ecclesiastics 3 and 1. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to be healed, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get 
and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. And going down to verse 11, he has made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Praise God for that word this morning. Praise God for the scripture. Thank you, uh, Dr. Edgerton, for prayer and uh, Elder Anita Dooley for our scripture this morning. We're going in, into the word of God this morning and we want to again welcome you and thank you for joining us here at Ephesus Ministries. Our task is given by God, our assignment is to somehow give us the word to lead us through this time. It, it's been a challenging and difficult time for the past five, going on six months now. It's just been an awesomely fearsome time that we've gone through. And there's an uncertain future. But while the, un while the future might be uncertain, there is one thing that is unbelievably not uncertain. And that is that God is always in charge. And so this morning, can I lift up your faith? Can I encourage you to believe that no matter what it looks like, if you trust God, God will bless you. We have been sort of looking um, the last uh, few months, actually, we started the year off by talking about coming out, coming out for us. Uh, God just led us to believe that this is a year of revival. And when everything started happening, we started wondering, God, how can this be a year of revival when there's so much death around us, when there's so much threat and, and such uh, a challenging thing that has happened in the world. We still believe in revival. We believe, however, that sometime God allows us to go through death to be resurrected. And we, we're just gonna continue believing that. We're gonna continue saying that we are going to trust God to believe that we are coming out. We're gonna be like the three Hebrew boys. We're gonna say no matter what happens, God is still able, God is still in charge, and we yet trust God. We believe the last words of Jesus as he prepared to um, transcend back up to heaven. He stood out with his disciples just before he was taken up in a cloud. He said, don't forget, I am with you always, even to the end of the earth. So can I encourage you today by telling you that God is still with you? Have faith, no matter what's going on. I want to stay in the same pattern of, of thought for our message today, but, but I want to raise a question to us. I'm going to read the scripture in a moment, but, but the subject this morning is just going to be very simple. Whose side are you on? Whose side are you on? We've been talking about uh, God bringing the children of Israel out of bondage taking them through a time of plague and pandemic. And when they went through the plague and the pandemic, when they smeared the doorpost of their homes with the blood of the lamb, that's when God spared their lives. And immediately after he brought them out of the bondage in Israel, but he led them through a wilderness experience. Sometimes coming out is not without pain. Coming out is not without heartache. Coming out can be just as fearsome and even more fearsome than staying in what you're in. And so we, we recognize that, that even when we're coming out, we've not yet gotten what we think we want. We, we are not where we think we want to be. And so today's message is going to talk about some of the things that the children of Israel did in their fearsome time, the, the children of Israel did when God was bringing them out. Today, the scripture is going to come from the book of Exodus, chapter 32. I want to go through the story with you, but let me read the 26th verse. 
Then Moses stood in the entrance of the camp and said, whoever is on the Lord's side, come to me. Moses just stood up and said, listen, whoever's on the Lord's side, you got to make a decision and step forward. That's what I want to tell you this morning. Question I'm going to raise to you. Who side are you on? And if you're on the Lord's side, step up and declare yourself. What is your testimony? One of the greatest mistakes that sometimes we make in life is, is um, choosing the wrong side. Sometime now, just for entertainment, I'll, I'll go to the NFL channel and I'll watch football. But they're all of the old football game tapes. Many times I'll, I'll watch even one of the Super Bowls and know ahead of time who won the game. I'm one of those kinds of people, though. I'm, I'm always supporting the underdog. I love to find out who's losing and who looks the worst. And, and that's who I'm going to cheer for. That's who I'm going to root for. Everybody can root for the winner. But, but I love finding who's losing. I'm going to root for them. And, and it can be the funniest thing in the world sitting there watching one of those games and I already know who won the game. And yet I'll cheer for the underdog, a cheer for the loser. In real life though, sometimes, um, it, isn't it fascinating that, that you can watch some of the greatest games I have seen has been when there's a team losing and everybody is rooting for the winning team and those who have been cheering and, and rooting for that losing team will give up. Sometimes they'll go home and sometimes they will sit down. And, and the marvelous thing about football and some of the greatest games we have seen is that sometimes in the last four or five or even two minutes in the game, the losing team just rallies, and comes forward. And the people who have gone home get the news that, hey, you left too soon because the winning team won. That's the reality of our experience with God sometimes. Sometimes we are cheering for the wrong thing, not knowing what the outcome is going to be. What's great about our relationship with God though is that we already know who wins. That battle is already decided. The victory not only has already been claimed by Jesus, but Jesus makes it very clear. I've, I've already won the game. I've already won the battle. Because of me, I've already given you the victory. But isn't it amazing that even though we know that, sometimes we will still choose the wrong side? That's what the children of Israel did in today's lesson. Let me tell the story very quickly. God had already delivered them, <clears throat> brought them out of Egypt. God already declared, I'm going to take you to a promised land. And he took Moses up into the mountain and said to Moses, let me give you the word. And God himself carved out a tablet of stone, took his own hands, and on the tablet of stone that he had carved out, he wrote his law, he wrote his words. Listen, let me tell you something. God's will has already been decided. It's either right or wrong. God gives us choice. God never makes us do anything that we don't want to do. As a matter of fact, the old fashioned word for that used to be that God gives us free will. When God made us in his image, it was not in his physical image, but in his spiritual image, God could have made man and say, I'm just gonna make man to think one way and that's my way. And, and somehow in man, I'm going to put something that says man can only do what I want him to do. But, but I guess that wouldn't have been fun. Instead, God said, I'm going to make man with the ability to choose. Even now, God wants us to love him. But do you know that 
the greatest love is, is, is not the love that is demanded, but it is the love that is chosen to be given. And so God said, I, I want man to choose to love me. I want man to choose. We, we have the choice, my sisters and brothers. God does not force us. My, my, my uh, late wife, Pastor Debbie, I used to love hearing her talk about the Holy Ghost because she would say the, the Holy Ghost is a gentleman. I love hearing her say he, he never forces his way in, but rather he knocks at your door. And in a quiet voice, he, he says, let me in. And, and, and he doesn't force you to do what you do, but instead the Holy Ghost speaks to you and say, that, that's not the right way to do it. That's another way. We have choice. But there are two sides, right, wrong, good, evil, light, or dark. Joshua recognized that much, much later on, by the way, because just before they went in the promised land and, and Moses was gone and Joshua knew that he had to lead the people, Joshua stood up and spoke to them. He said, listen, we're going into the promised land. I'm going to lead you, but you've got to choose for yourself what God you're going to serve. He says, if God be God, serve God. But if you think there's some other God, go ahead and do your thing. But I love what he said. He said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And so in this story, God takes Moses up and he says, Moses, let me, let me give you my law. Let me give you the way I want life to be lived. It's got to be holiness. It's got to be sanctification. No other way. And he wrote the Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments really are sort of in, in, in uh, just a couple of sections. That first section that says, listen, Moses, the first thing is I want everybody to know I am God. I am the Lord. You are God. You should serve me and have no other gods. And then he talked about how to live with your neighbor. But then God heard something. The children of Israel were still down at the foot of the mountain. And you know what I like about God? God always knows what's going on. This pandemic, political conflicts, the civil unrest, people who somehow are mistreating and killing other people because of the color of their skin. God knows about that. He's known about it all the time. Sometimes we want to raise the question, God, if you really know what's going on, why don't, why don't you stop it? That's another message. Stick with us every Sunday and, and we'll get to that. God knows all about it. There is nothing that gets past him. And so God heard because the children of Israel, while Moses was there, they said, you know what? We're tired of all of this God stuff. We just don't want to do God anymore. Moses, there's no fun in it. Everybody should be allowed to have some fun. Everybody should be allowed to enjoy life. And so they said to Aaron, Aaron, Moses is, is going off someplace and, and you know, he's, he's out and he's, let him go and deal with God. But we want to have a party. We want to have a party. Sometimes if you look around the world, it seems that that's been the choice of the world now. Poor Aaron. Poor Aaron had been left to stand for God. And Aaron said, you know what, if, if that's what the people want, you got to give the people what they want. And so Aaron said to them, bring me your gold. And he took all of their gold earrings. And, and by the way, the gold that um, they brought to Aaron, their gold earrings and things, they, they were not really uh, theirs because God had said to them, when you leave Egypt, tell all of the Egyptian loan us, loan us all of your gold. And I've preached before that the reason they said loan is if you loan something, if it's on loan, 
It's not yours. You've got to pay it back. But God said that you've got to give it back to me. So they took what really belonged to God and they fashioned a golden calf. Oh my God, isn't that true now? People worshiping a golden calf. We count success in this world by how much gold and silver we have. Look at people that we think are important based upon how much wealth in the things of this world they have. Success is not based upon integrity. It's not based upon ethics. It's not based upon morality. Um, as a pastor, one of my greatest fears is that somehow the church has fallen into that. I hate meeting somebody and ask me how many members you got. Sometimes I won't say it's none of your business. You know, but that's how we count success. We have a big, beautiful building and, and, and our temple is one that God himself would be pleased with. So let me throw this in as a sideline. I very often say that uh, I ask people if Jesus were to come back to earth today, whose church do you think he would attend on Sunday? There are some beautiful churches and, and even Ephesus, I think we have a beautiful sanctuary, just a, a beautiful building. Would Jesus come just because the building is beautiful? Would he want to come in because we've got a lot of members? Would he necessarily want to come because the choir is kicking and popping and the musicians got it going on? Listen, let me tell you something. Um, uh, if, if, if there's anybody that's, that's watching me, stop saying just because your musicians were good and you shouted and made a lot of noise on Sunday, stop saying that the Holy Ghost showed up because the Holy Ghost is not interested in all that noise that you're making. And, and yeah, I love having a good time. I, I've been there and, I'm, and I wanna be there sometime now. I, I enjoy the charisma and the charismatic worship. I enjoy a preacher that can rap back and, and hoop and tell the story. But even though I enjoy it, I recognize that that's not just when the Holy Ghost shows up. Let me say to this very simply with you, if he shows up when you get to church, the question that I have is, you mean you didn't have him at home? It wasn't in your heart. All of a sudden, God said, Moses, Moses, there's a noise down in the camp. Go down and, and see what all of the noise is about. He said, it sounds like the children down of Israel. They're my children. Recognize something that these were God's chosen people. These were God's children. Essentially, this was the church, the chosen ones. And God said, they're having a big party. To go down, Moses says to Joshua, uh, Joshua rather says to Moses, it sounds like the noise of war. There's a big roar. There's a lot of noise going on. And Moses, yeah, there's a lot of noise. He said, but it, it's the, not the noise of conflict. It's not even the noise of victory, but it is the noise of a party. What about you? Is somehow your life now, you, you're trying to figure out just how to have a big party? You need money to do it. You need the accoutrements that somehow society has told you are necessary to do it. They get to the foot of the camp, Moses and Joshua. Moses rightfully gets angry. When he gets angry, he, he does something that's totally another message that we'll preach sometime. He, he takes what God has given him and he throws it on the ground and breaks it in part. And sometimes I'm so afraid that that's often what has happened in the world. We, we get so busy now. You've heard me say it before. Sometimes so many of the messages that we hear preached now is not the gospel. It's positive thinking. It's motivational speaking. It's an oratorical contest. And the word, the gospel, sometimes just gets thrown on the ground and is broken up. And Moses raises the question, what's going on? He takes the golden calf, 
puts it in the fire, melts it down. Can I encourage somebody this morning? <clears throat> oh, very good look at your life. If there is any slim possibility that there is a golden calf in your life, burn it up. A <laughs> pastor, are you telling me to get rid of my money? Nope. Nope. If you've got money, if you've got savings, if you have worked hard and God has given you the blessings of life, enjoy what God has given you, but somehow find a way to say, God, I enjoy this. I'm comfortable. I, uh, it, 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 I'd love a few million dollars. I really would. If, if anybody's got any spare, I would take it. But it cannot become the golden calf in your life. Don't think that just because you have what this life has to offer, you've got it made. But somehow find that way to say, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I, I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Stand on Jesus. Trust in him. God still works. God still works miracles. God still heals. God yet makes ways when there seems to be no way. Never give up on God. Never stop praying. Never stop trusting God. And you know what's good about God? God sometimes says, you know what? I do my best work when it's dark. I do my best work when it gets to be midnight. And once midnight is over and you can't see what's going on, my father used to say that the darkest hour is just before day. God sometimes says it is only when you get to the darkest hour and you can't see, you can't figure it out. And all of a sudden, daylight comes. And when daylight comes, you will find that I've taken care of it. Remember, the psalmist says, weeping. Weeping endures through the night. But joy comes in the morning. Trust God. Trust God. Whatever you have, God gives it to you. But God says, whatever I've given you, it's only on loan. And you pay it back when you use it for my glory. And so Moses took that golden calf, destroyed it. And the Bible says he, he pulverized it and he cast it on the waters and had the children of Israel to drink it. And then he stood up and said, anybody that's on the Lord's side, step forward. When I was a little boy growing up, we loved to get out in an empty field someplace and play football. As a matter of fact, we were poor. Sometimes we didn't even have a ball. We would just take a can and we were going to be out throwing an old can around the calling of the football. But the first thing we did, choose a quarterback. And I love that when, when we all got turns to play quarterback, but the two quarterbacks would stand up there in the middle of the field. And they would either choose players or they would stand and say, one by one, whose side do you want to be on? And that's what God is saying to us now. Choose sides. Whose side do you want to be on? Here is the crux of the question. God's side is already won. The victory is already his. And so the question for you, my sisters and brothers, is will you still choose to be part of a losing team? Or will you stand up and say, God, 
for you I live and for you I die. This morning, right where you are, let me give you an opportunity to say in your own heart, in your own mind, I wanna step forward and be on God's side. This morning, will you say right here in this place at this time, I make the declaration that God, I trust you. God, I believe you. If you will, you don't even have to get out of your seat, but just in your heart, come to the altar and tell God, God, I trust you. God, I believe you. Bow your heads for a moment right where you are. God, we admit that sometimes we are miserable and awesome failures. We don't do what we ought to do. And we find, God, that the things you require of us, somehow we just fall short of. But today, would you give us assurance through your word that you care about us, that you love us in spite of ourselves, that we have a chance to be with you in glory. We thank you for the victory that you've given us through Jesus to Christ. We thank you, God, that you said, I will never leave you, I'll never forsake you. And the only condition you give us is to say, I believe. And so today, God, we stand here and say, in spite of ourselves, we believe in you. We don't come because we're worthy. We got to acknowledge, God, that even right here, we, we can't even clean ourselves up because there's some stuff, God, that, that only you can fix. But we come and say, here we are. We want to be on your side in Jesus' name. My sisters and brothers, if you have prayed that prayer this morning, and, and I don't ask you to pray that prayer just, you know, some people think I'm saved, sanctified, baptized, and filled with the precious Holy Ghost, that with the mighty burning fire, I never need to come to the altar. Let me tell you something. I don't care how saved you are. You got some stuff that you ought to bring to the altar and say, God, forgive me, forgive that, and cover it with grace. This morning, if you have come, Please have the assurance that God loves you, that God cares about you. This morning, even in our service, we pray for the sick. We pray that God covers us. We pray every day that God, this dreaded disease, protect us from it. Build a wall around us, build a fence around us. Hide us just as you hear the children of Israel in Goshen so that it doesn't come nigh us. Heal the sick work miracles, and not only that, God raise the dead. My dear sisters and brothers, if you really want to be saved, count yourself by grace saved right now. I want to invite you as pastor, if you don't have a church home, please feel free to become a part of our Ephesus church family. I would love to be your pastor. I take that very seriously. I pray for those who are sheep of Ephesus. I pray for our family and their families. It's very easy to become a part of the Ephesus family. Um, Sister Shannon is going to give us more information, but you can write to EphesusInfo at gmail.com. EphesusInfo at gmail.com. You can do it right now. You can do it immediately. Just write and say, I don't have a church home, but I want to be a part of this church. And even if I can't go to the building right now, Pastor, I want to have the assurance that you will pray for me. If you have prayer requests, if you have needs, let us know. And God knows we will certainly be there for you. Assistant Pastor Shannon is going to come back and give us our announcements and give us ways that we can give. God bless you. God's peace be with you. Shannon, come back and give the announcements and close our service for today. Thank you, Pastor. As our pastor has stated, if you have prayer requests, if you um, want to uh, reach out to us for any reason, just for follow-up, you need prayer, you want more information, you can email us at Ephesus 
info at gmail.com. You can also inbox us if you are watching through Facebook. And if you're watching through Facebook, we're going to ask that you like this page and also follow it. You can also find us on YouTube. We do have an Ephesus Ministries YouTube channel. We would love for you, if you enjoyed this message, you can go back and hear other messages from our pastor. And so you can find those on our YouTube channel. And we would love it if you would subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can know when our pastor has uploaded other messages. Also, we are in prayer every night at 6.30 if you would like more information about that please reach out to us. We also have Bible study every Wednesday, beginning at seven o'clock. We're only in Bible study now from seven until 7.30. As an overview, you can join us right here on Facebook Live, or if you would like to be a part of that live um, experience here on Zoom, you can email us and we will get you that information. We are not a church that comes on uh, to look for offerings, but we do put that information out because we have had people ask, how can I give into the ministry of Ephesus? There are four ways that you can give into the ministry of Ephesus. We do use the Tithely app and you can um, text 1-833-527-6311. When you send that text, you're just going to type in the message, give, G-I-V-E. We also use PayPal. You can go to PayPal dot me forward slash Ephesus Ministries NY. And we're going to ask that you make sure that the E, the M, and the NY are capitalized. You can also send your prayer request, your offerings, however, whatever you want, um, just your information. If you would like to write us, you can always write us at 80 Durham Avenue, Buffalo, New York, 14215. Five. And then our last way of giving is via cash app. And that is dollar sign Ephesus Ministries 80. Um, that is all of our giving information. That is all of our announcements. We are so glad once again that you joined us. We look forward to spending more time with you in the future. We look forward to hearing from you. So thank you once again so much for joining us. To all of our Ephesus ministry, uh, Ministries members that are here with us, on Zoom. We love and appreciate you so much, and we will see you at prayer on tonight at 6.30. And so from now, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory, and we give you honor. We thank you that we are covered and that we are protected. And God, even though we are not leaving a building, even as we log off from this service, we thank you for keeping us covered until we come back together once again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good day, amen. and we love you all.